It is May of 2018, and I've just spent the better part of a month immersed in zombie fiction. I've poured hours into State of Decay 2. I've fought my fair share of battles, and they are billions. I've also stayed in touch with a friend by playing through Resident Evil Code Veronica. That's not to mention my recent return to classic movies such as 28 Days Later or Shaun of the Dead. What's more, Sony has been revealing more footage of its upcoming Days Gone, and we're also set to see Zombies Mode return with Black Ops 4. And if you consider fungus-infected humans to be zombies, then The Last of Us Part 2 will round out an undead heavy E3. All of this begs the question, why do zombies still fascinate us? This decade has been saturated with the reanimated monsters, from The Walking Dead's mainstream success to War War Z's $540 million box office showing. Common Refrain would suggest that by now we should be tired of the undead horde. YouTube comments, very likely on this video itself, will probably say something to that effect. But games such as Black Ops 4, State of Decay 2, Days Gone, and Dying Light suggest otherwise. They hint that not only is the genre going to survive, but it could very well continue to flourish. And I think that's a better trend than most of us give it credit for. Zombies fit well into video games. They are enemies at their most basic, with relatively simple AI, lacking both purpose and motivation. They don't take cover, they don't use complex tactics, and when triggered, they run straight at you, becoming cannon fodder for your firearm, crowbar, or Molotov cocktails. Put simply, video game zombies provide catharsis. They are simple and, in many ways, the ideal video game opponent. Of course, they are also a strong source of dread. Zombies spawn in the everyday world, whether it's the idyllic suburb or the overgrown urban sprawl. They transform places we once found familiar, lending potential danger to every barn, gas station, or alleyway. It's their constant threat that makes supply runs terrifying in state of decay. It's their relentless hunger that instills fear in dying light's open world. Say what you will about the genre and the zombie fatigue many of us have felt in the past few years, but these games rarely contain a dull moment. I think it's these pillars, these assumptions about zombie games, that makes them so much money. Players have a general sense of what they're getting into when they buy one. There will probably be aspects of survival, decision-making, and stealth. There will also be an element of horror, but not too much horror. This general consistency in the design of zombie games is, in my mind, crucial. Developers can use the undead, and their almost guaranteed profit, as Trojan horses for gameplay innovations. Take Left 4 Dead, for instance. On the surface, it was a co-op-focused zombie shooter. But Valve took the opportunity to introduce the Director, an AI that remapped weapons, items, and enemies every time you played. State of Decay, on the other hand, used zombies to create a survival-focused immersive sim with hardcore permadeath design. And They Are Billions reinvigorated the RTS genre in general, using zombies to demonstrate an overwhelming sense of numbers. By using our undead pop culture icons, developers can disguise risks as commercial guarantees. It's a testament to the flexibility of zombie games that they've slowly spread into so many genres over the years. One might focus on melee combat, while the next emphasizes puzzles and exploration. Some make use of open worlds, while others guide you along predetermined paths. Zombies are less of an enemy and more of a setting, one that can adapt to myriad circumstances as the medium fluctuates and evolves. They set the stage for what could be a tragic horror story or a sandbox power fantasy. In any form of entertainment, the most memorable zombie stories act as a mirror. They place humanity in a post-apocalyptic petri dish, observing how we might react to a widespread disaster. They show the lengths characters will go to in order to survive, and the way they interact with fellow human beings once the law has faded and chaos reigns. State of Decay is one of my favorite entries in the zombie pantheon, specifically because it allows me to find my own stories in an apocalyptic wasteland. Zombie fiction has always been a way for authors, directors, and developers to confront humanity's anxieties through a distorted lens. As Max Brooks, author of the Fantastic World War Z, said in a 2009 interview, Zombie stories give people the opportunity to witness the end of the world they've been secretly wondering about, while at the same time allowing themselves to sleep at night because the catalyst of that end is fictional. This is why George Romero, the creator of what we know as modern zombies, set Dawn of the Dead in a shopping mall. He didn't just want to make a zombie sequel, he wanted to comment on the worship that consumerism attracted. None of this is to mention the various ways you can view his original zombie film, Night of the Living Dead. 
Some see it as a critique of the Vietnam War, while others consider it a look at Cold War politics. Others still take it as a criticism of 1960s American culture in general. To quote the man himself in an interview with the website Horror Movies, Zombies are my ticket to ride. It's how I get a deal. I don't care what they are, I don't care where they came from. They could be any disaster. They could be an earthquake, a hurricane, whatever. In my mind, they don't represent anything to me except a global change of some kind. And the stories are about how people respond or fail to respond to this, and that's really all they've ever represented to me. Running with this logic, I don't think the popularity of zombie games is any coincidence. As opposed to movies or books, in which humans behave through the perspective of the creator, games allow us to see how we might react when given agency. Of course, games are nowhere near as harrowing as a real-world apocalypse might be, but the immersion still allows for some semblance of that decision-making process. Games make upwards of $100 billion a year. If any form of entertainment is indicative of where our collective anxieties lie, it's video games. So it's no surprise that zombies have arisen, died, and reanimated so many times throughout the medium's short history. And I'm not at all surprised to see them coming back again. No matter your stance on Trump, Brexit, gun control, or politics in general, I think we can all feel the division that these topics cause. I keep seeing the words surreal plastered across advertisements and social media, and I see jokes about the world actually ending. I see the word nuclear at every turn. Suddenly, this new influx of zombie games makes sense. Zombies provide an easy excuse for catharsis. They're the perfect enemies, ones you don't have to feel bad about killing, ones you don't have to think twice about before shooting in the face. Yes, the best zombie titles transcend these simple tropes, but it's these tropes that make money in the first place. Like Romero said, it is these tropes that give developers their ticket to ride. They can make innovation possible. And as game hardware keeps getting better and game developers keep getting savvier, we're only going to see better takes on the digital zombie apocalypse, and from there, better innovations in this medium we all love. Criticize zombie games all you want. Call them trite, redundant, or rote. But I think we'll always need them. They can be dumb and fun and a reason to just turn off and play a game for a while. But time and time again, developers have used them to also push video games forward, taking reanimated corpses and giving us a new way to look at them. We might stumble on a mediocre effort once in a while, but as long as zombies allow for creators to keep making those efforts and taking these risks, I'm all on board.